India. Right, calling out to Allah. So, Oli, I'm just going to finish off now, inshallah, uh, with a few points just to wrap up. Now, that's just some, uh, we said there's a difference of opinion. Okay. Um, calling out to the awliya. How do we uh, in practice? So, difference of opinion. Now, what happens when you find that great scholars of Islam, of the Muslim world, used to practice istighatha? So, we're not talking about going to the grave, away from the grave. They used to call out on their shaykh. Not that they would tell the common people to do it, but well, some of them didn't tell the common people at least. What does that mean about these great figures? Especially when they're in your sunnah for hadith. So the early hadith scholars, I'm going to mention the early hadith, they accept Abdul Haqq Dahlawi as a great scholar of hadith. Do they have to make takfir of him? Of him? Shawulullah, it's going to be mentioned anyway. I'm going to mention some examples then. I'm going to start in Nigeria and I'm going to work my way through to India. Inshallah. I'll just go for example. Shaykh Usman down for you in Nigeria. Great, great wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. He mentions it in his book. I couldn't locate the book, but I had to find another one. So he has a book of du'as. He says in there explicitly, if you have a need, call on Sheikh Abdul Qadir al-Jailani. That's what he says. As we said, there's difference of opinion among scholars. Some said it's allowed, some said it's not allowed. But we, it's just there. It exists. You have to face reality. You can't just pretend it doesn't, it's not there. It's there. Great figures. I, I couldn't find that exact quote. I checked with someone and said the quote does exist, but I found another one which is similar. Among his miracles, somebody mentioned it, among the miracles is that one of the cavalry soldiers named Muhammad Dadu, who is still living, informed us that they had tied him, so there was a battle going on, that, that had him tied and were determined to kill him, the enemies of the Sheikh Uthman and Fodio. So he's with Sheikh Uthman, and one of them pierced him with his lance. At that moment, he called upon the Sheikh. I think, I think Sheikh or Sheikh I think it's a Nigerian way of saying Sheikh, possibly, I'm not sure. And he, sud he suddenly, he saw that the Sheikh with his own eyes standing between him and the enemies. So he called on Sheikh Uthman, he appeared. One of the enemies had his lance affixed to pierce Dadu again, and when the Sheikh who suddenly turned his uh, and uh, when the Sheikh who suddenly turned his lance away and caused their eyes to be veiled, the enemies were not able to see Dadu, and they questioned one another as to where he had gone. So they, one one moment they're trying to lance him, and the next minute he's just disappeared. Uh, even though he had been tied up in his original place, they then fled the area. So these people who were trying to attack this person then fled. When Muhammad Dadu returned, he informed us and the Sheikh as to what had occurred. So he came back and told Sheikh Uthman, I called on you and you appeared and helped me. And this is from his miracles. That's what his followers mention. Okay? So, and this is the Nigerian uh, caliphate of uh, Sokoto, I believe. Sheikh Uthman started it. It lasted for about approximately 100 years. So, what do you say about Sheikh Uthman Dan Fodian and his followers? And the, so, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Dadu and then the person who wrote this text, are they all kuffar? It's a question you have to ask. You know Tawheed better than them? Or is it that karamat do exist? Karamat do exist. If you call someone who's 20 miles away, it doesn't happen. But a, karamat would, a karama would be that you call on someone and they hear you 20 miles away. Is it possible for Allah to convey, Allah to convey your voice to that person and then Allah facilitate for them to come here, appear here? Is it within the power of Allah? Yes. So how is it shirk? Sheikh Ahmad Zarouk. So now we go from Nigeria to North Africa, move up slightly. Great scholar of the Shadiri Tariqah and um, Maliki Fiqh as well. And he's known as being very Quran and Sunnah focused. Very Quran and Sunnah focused. What does he say? A famous poem of his, he says the following I am to my murid, the one who joins his scatteredness When the tyranny of the time strikes with a disaster Even if you are in a calamity, constriction and alienation Call out, O Zarruq, and I will come quickly That's what he told his murids Okay, he's a Quran and Sunnah, very Quran and Sunnah based scholar Obviously he had, this, he had these spiritual experiences, I assume He had this spiritual experience where some of his students called on him And he could, was able to hear them now, if it happens to someone, what are you supposed to do? What's that supposed to say? Oh, I'm, I'm committing shirk. 
or Allah is what's it, what's that person going to do? They're going to sit down and think, okay, is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Allah is blessing me with able to to hear someone who are because this counts as shit because the person is next to you and um, the context is I believe, I believe after passing away as well it would it would appear like this poem is used passing away right Imam Murtada al Zabidi very interesting he was from India went to Yemen took the name then Zabid so no, Murtada al Zabidi then he went to Egypt and he became one of the great ulama of Egypt to the point I think it was mentioned in the biographies that when people from Morocco used to come they used to he feel like queues of people outside his house to see him. So Indian scholar, great, great imam, wrote an Arabic language, he's a master, just a really amazing scholar. What did he say? He says the following. Abdul Wahab al-Marzuki, it was about different shaykhs. He said, he would say to his barids, if you experience some difficulty, then seek help by means of me and I will appear immediately. For the one who cannot benefit his student at a time of difficulty is not paid attention to. I can't remember if the Arabic said he's not a man who cannot help his murid. I can't remember if it's like Arabic. And then Sheikh Imam Zabidi says, Murtada Zabidi, he says, after this, he says, and his murids told me that after his passing away, we sought help from him and he appeared and helped us. Then he says, I was amongst those who experienced this after his death. This is when I suffered severe pain in my abdomen, and this was at three in the past. I was not at my normal location, and I did not find any medication, no one was guided to it. I remembered his statement. What the Sheikh said. So I sought help from him and fell asleep. I saw that he immediately came, came and placed his hand on my abdomen and said, "Get better." And in the morning, I find I was fine. So he said, "Look, this Sheikh said this. Let me just test it out and see what happens." Fell asleep. Sheikh appears in the dream, places his hand, wakes up, and he's fine. Did he commit shirk? Obviously, he's saying, "Look, the Sheikh said it. Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible." He follows that opinion. He tried it out. It worked. The Sheikh had passed away. The next one, Shaulullah Dahlawi, amazing figure. The Ali al-Hadith of Indian subcontinent, Ali hadith as they call themselves, traced their sonad in hadith by him. If he's not Muslim, astaghfirullah, we don't say that. But that's the meaning of what they say. Now, what? there's a slight problem. Everybody in Indian subcontinent says Shaulullah is with us. So that obviously then is a battle. How can you have Salafis and Sufis all saying that they have the same teacher? Meaning, the teachers, teachers, teacher. Insha'Allah. Some earlier hadith scholars are quite honest. They actually do admit he's a Sufi. They did say he's a Sufi. Some try to, and then and he has a problem where people try to attribute fabricated works to him. But there's other works of his which are clear about, there's so many works of his which are clear by his Sufi aspect. Now, this is in his official biography. His cousin, brother in law, Murid, student, and traveling companion wrote a biography of his and he showed it to him and he said yes this is I authorize this biography Muhammad Ashik he wrote this about somebody who is a murid of his Shaulullah it's a call al -jali. he says one day so this is a person who's a student of Shaulullah he says one day I got up for Fajr prayer but okay so what I'll give you context basically this there's a person who knew Shaulullah who was going and visiting these these Sufi sheikhs who are not Sharia compliant they were like there's some Sufi sheikhs who are not totally Sharia compliant. So he would go and visit them and, and, and sit with them. So now he comes to Fajr. He wants to pray Fajr one day. And what happens? One day I got up to pray for Fajr, Fajr prayer and the congregation was ready about to begin. I wished to pray two units <clears throat> and joined, then joined the congregation. However, just as I had formed my attention for this, that both of these sheikhs' forms manifested in front of me and attempted to prevent me from praying. These sheikhs that he'd been going to appeared and tried to stop him praying. That's what this person is noticing. I wished to get rid of them and began to uh, begin the prayer, but despite my attempts, I was unable to do so. One of the sheikhs sat down at the place of prostration, such that in order to prevent me from prostrating, the other sheikh stood next to me and was preventing me. <clears throat> when I found I was unable to do anything, I began to recite, La hawla la quwwata illa billah. But I did not find this beneficial to my predicament. I was increasingly becoming more distressed and was aware that the time for the prayer was running out. Now, some of you say, Well, la hawla wa la quwwata, why is that not working? Well, it's just Zikr is good, we call on Allah, but sometimes you have to take the means as well. If I need to lift up something heavy, I do zikr, but it doesn't mean that I, I don't ask somebody to come and help me to lift up the heavy thing as well, doesn't it? it that's not negated. That, 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 people have this odd understanding that, well, that's what's going on there. He's made zikr and it didn't work and he calls on the shaykh and he helps. No, 
I mean, this is a complicated issue, but he's taking the means. He had a connection, connection with the Sheikh, which helped him. Anyway, so basically, he's making dhikr, he's not helping him. He's still seeing these two figures preventing him from prayer. He goes, then he says, I then began to individually recite the names of the pious folk of the past, meaning the noble awliya and the great prophets, and seeking help from them. I then remembered the Hazrat al Akhtas, Shah Waliullah, had once said that at a time of distress or difficulty, remember my name. That's what Shah Waliullah told him. That's why he was telling his murid, remember me when you're in guilty. As soon as I had called out, took the name, so the, the Urdu translation of the Persian says zikr, I made the zikr of his name, the name of Hazrat Akhtas, and sought help from him, that I saw that Hazrat Akhtas appeared and with his two hands took the, the, both sheikhs by the ear and banished them and saved me from the tribulation. And I thanked Allah for this. And then he goes on to say that, Shaulullah's biographer says that this person, he says, after this I became even more attached to Shaulullah, like and more respect for him. That I called on him and he actually turned, appeared and helped me. Okay, so he's away. And Shaulullah's son, Abdul Aziz, so he's in the early hadith sanad as well of hadith. That's where they come from. The sanad of learning. They studied they, they studied hadith for someone who studied hadith for someone. Abdul Aziz Dahlawi has clear fatwa. Is permitted to ask the deceased person for dua. And there's many examples, Shaulullah, of his father reciting some poetry of a po someone, and then that, that, that sheikh appears out of nowhere to. He's, he, and Al Fars and Arifin, there's so many stories like this. A number of stories, sorry, a number of stories like this. Once again, what do you say? I, I missed out in the Middle East because there's many examples there anyway. So, what do you say about this? Great figures. Do we do the Salafi school and the Santawheed better than them? Does, because what's happened now is that they've just rolled out this idea that it's shirk. People just assume it's shirk automatically, where actually it's much more nuanced. Remember this people's iman you're talking about? Yeah. Be very careful. So if you make takfir of people, make start, start with these scholars first. Because I, you know, somebody was saying to me, oh, well, if people don't have knowledge, we can't make takfir of them. The Salafi Wahhabi school, on the issue of asking someone for dua, say that that's not an excuse. That confusion is not an excuse on asking you for dua. Even so, why don't they start with these ulama and make takfir of them? Na'udhu billah. We, we don't make takfir of them. We say it's valid position that they followed. And then they have to work their way down to the common person. But they can't do that because that just whole sways of the Muslim world are therefore non-Muslim. Their hadith sanad is discounted then as well. Anyway, just to finish off, uh, seek help from the jinn, not the prophets or awliya. This is a contradictory point from the Salafi. Some Salafi scholars, some Salafi scholars, I say some, not all. Some Salafi scholars permitted for permissible matters. For, for, for permissible matters. They said you can seek help from jinn for a permissible matter. Sheikh Taqiyuddin ibn Taymiyyah has debated whether he said that, but some of them claim that he did say that. Others claim he didn't, but he's debated that he said that. And Sheikh Uthaymeen. This is what I found in one of the commentaries of Kitab al-Tawheed by a Salafi scholar. Other Salafi scholars say, no, you can't ask them to make dua for you. Uh, so you can't ask the jinn for help. 